Whoa. The bell was that extra bell long. Was too long. Whoa. That bell is way too long. We need to cut it. <laughs> it is. It is May 14, 2017, and school is officially in. Cute the theme music. Do the right thing. Bang it in my headphones. Bang it in my headphones. <laughs> All right. Uh it's Mitch. We're back again. Um and I'm here with my illustrious co host once again, Mr. Aaron. Aaron. What's up? And <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ant over there. Yo 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 yo. yo. <laughs> keep singing cut it every two seconds. <laughs> that intro way too long. We need to cut it. Oh, brother. <laughs> and today's lesson is on colorism. So. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, should we dun, dun, dun that? Should we do it? Should we do that? <laughs> I think is it's that, appropriate. Is that, a, it's is that an attending doom? It's appropriate. It is? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know because colorism has been going on for like an awfully long time, so it's not like yeah, it's nothing new. Nothing. It's nothing new at all. Unfortunately, it is a very, very ugly byproduct of um, actually of a bunch of nothing because that's what people currently do. They just create a bunch of nothingness because of so. Um, colorism, the definition of colorism is actually um, about um, race-based discrimination, okay? And it's about the varying shades of a particular race. So like light skin versus dark skin? Exactly. But it's oh, brought bad. on... Yeah, it it's also can be called shadism. Um, and it comes from colonialism, largely. Colonialism. So, so, when I started looking up this topic, it goes pretty deep. Most um, geneticists, you know, actually largely believe that the original man was black and came from Africa. And then... From there, we all just kind of separated from the continent and people wound up in different places. And over long periods of time, people changed based on, you know, where they were located and what they had to adapt to. And their their colors, you know, changed and became different. Everybody wasn't dark anymore. You didn't have have to have as much melanin in your skin, you know, for survival purposes. Well, that's the popular theory. Right. And that's the theory that we're going to work with today. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, you know, time, of course, goes on for a long, long time. And, you know, people feel like we're going to create these, you know, little nation states. We're going to, you know, we're going to build shit. And that was kind of during the colonies in iniquity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that was like, like basically it was like a, a mother city, like a Rome or um, like a, a city like, in, like, like Greece, like a large city surrounded by a bunch of other little offshoots, like smaller cities which they subordinated to the larger city but then people started deciding 
you know, we're going to venture out past that. We're going to start conquering things beyond this little, you know, section that we live in, you know, because of um, penises, because that's what penises do. <laughs> they, insert, <laughs> penises insert, they insert themselves in places where no one asked them to be and where they probably shouldn't be. But hell, let's put our penises here anyway. So, <laughs> this sounds like ancient been, Egypt times. Well, it's not all ancient Egypt times. This is actually during what they call the age of um, of Aquarius. It is not the age of Aquarius. <laughs> 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 um, it's during like the the age of discovery when when there were a bunch of you know different. European nations, basically, who are deciding that they were going to branch out and they wanted to start conquering other places. They were expanding. Again, because of, you know, dicks and penises. So, they go out and start exploring different, you know, places and, you know, see what they can do. Oh, yeah. 100%. Because part of... (laughs) Going other places and conquering things is vagina. Yeah, who doesn't want to explore a vagina? Exactly. But oh, we're going to get to vagina in a second. So, so you you have to have a reason, though. Like, human beings have to have a reason to subjugate other people. You know, for some reason, penises are not, you know, reason enough. They have to make another reason <laughs> up. And usually the reason that that people use to subordinate other people has been religion, unfortunately. Right. Um, so it's a it's a system of what they call othering or making someone the other. Like I am the enlightened one, I am the one who is civilized, you know, I am and I mean you're unfortunately Bibles and other support, you know, docu- documents that are religious have supported people in this. It's like, you know, I, I, I worship the one true God. I have a monotheistic view of the world. You have a polytheistic view of the world. Your polytheistic mm-hmm. view of the world is savage. You and all of your native people are savages and I will now subjugate you. And I will take your land. I will take your resources. I will take your pussy. And that's pretty much how that goes. Grab them by Grab them right, by right. Grab them right grab by them the by the the <laughs> so, so that is, that's colonialism sort of in a nutshell. But what happens when you do that? There's, 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 there's different types of um, colonialism. Um, there's the kind where you literally settle where you are going. That's what the Americans did in this country that was settler colonialism. They came here under the guise of practicing religion, you know, like having freedom of religion. Mm-hmm. And religion from, from religious right. persecution. Right. Uh, of course that was not necessarily the, the real reason they were over here. That's what they said they were here for. And then it after they died, it does look good on paper. And then it looks good when you pull up in a ship when somebody's never seen you before and they're like, what the, f- what the, I don't know you, who are you? You're like, oh, I'm just mm-hmm. here to, 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 so I could be religiously free. And you're like, oh, cool, I'll share my mate, you know, my corn with you and, and I'll share my blankets and we can be cool. And then sometime but, later, it's like, you're savage. Like like, on <laughs> well, you know, that too, that, you know, I'm gonna, Uh, You guys are kind of inferior to our race. We're going to try to enslave you because savages Mm -hmm. and penises. Savages Savages and And, penises. Savage 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 penises. penises. And savage Savage penises. penises. (laughs) So that's how that, you know, generally goes. Then you have exploitation colonialism, which is what I was just, I was just um, talking about was I need to come and take your resources and I want to rape your land. And not only 
am I going to show up here and just wipe, like, I'm not going to wipe you out. You actually have to be like me now. Uh, there's, a, there's a really good explanation of colonialism that Trevor Noah gives in his stand up for Afraid of the Dark. That's what he talks about when he's talking about colonialism mm-hmm. in, the, right. in his stand up. He's talking about just showing up and just, you know, saying, coming to, you know, my living room, like, you know, Anthony Trump to my living room and saying, you know, this living room that, that's right here, this is actually going to be United States of Anthony's living room. Now. And you're going to speak my language and you're going to worship my God and you're going to do everything I say do and you're going to freely allow me to plow through your women because yeah, yeah. And, and eat my non-seasoned food to eat my non-seasoned food all, <laughs> all of that all, all that good stuff so <laughs> the issue with that becomes how do you keep these people subjugated how do you keep and the color folk subjugated how do you keep these people subjugated Period. Apart, how do you do apartheid. It? And where that apartheid comes from is for you to now use the men for labor. All the men that are strong are going to fight you. You have to kill them. All the other mm-hmm. men you will then use for labor. You will enslave them and use them for labor. And the women, well, we already said what would happen to the women. Right. They shall be the new female birth givers. I mean, you you use them for labor as well, but you also use them as pleasure holes, unfortunately. I know that sounded really bad, but it's true. Mm-hmm. And then you you use their children as literal biological weapons. The children that they have for you because there's going to be children that are now born that are biracial. Right. And those children are not going to be allowed into the dominant society, are they? Not at all. No, you take those children and you place them right back, cycle them through the same people that you just raped and pillaged. So what then happens is you have this, this child, this other, that's sitting in your you know, in your ethnicity that doesn't fit. They're another now. And they, well, they're like, they're living with partial issues. You're living with partial issues, you know, of like, like, you know, psychological issues because it's your child, but it's a child of rape. And they're a child of yours, so they get your half-love hate. They have half love hate for their own self because of what happened to them. Their community has a half love hate for them as well. So you just keep that going over time and now you have developed what you're talking about, apartheid. This system based on colorism. Because colorism doesn't really exist except for the fact that I'm brown, you're brown, he's white, he those are not real factors these are all social factors that we oppose onto this they're not real they are just they're literally imposed they're social constructs they're not real we should, we should emphasize that, that they're not real even though they seem real to us or yep. to our American culture yep or to any culture because I mean look at how this because I mean anybody that's been um, colonized anybody that speaks you know English and and not in England they've been colonized anybody who speaks Spanish but is not in Spain has been colonized anybody who speaks French but is not in France has been colonized it's touched every part of this planet Mm -hmm. I would actually argue that it's worse in Spanish speaking countries because here in America, we at least we argue amongst ourselves about different gradations in our, you know, our skin tone, but we don't claim not to be black That's in true. general. People. Well, I mean, you Spanish have you have your handful of people. Oh, I'm not black. I'm 
I'm Haitian or I'm not black, I'm from Trinidad or I'm not black, I'm Dominican. But, and I'm glad you just brought that I'm, up because because what you're talking I'm, about. So that's the, yeah, that's not the same thing though, is it? It's not because yeah. what they're claiming is I am my ethnicity or I am my nationality or I am my culture. That's not the what only, your race is. The only the only difference between them and us is a boat stop. Yep. It's getting dropped off the boat first. That's it. Mm. It's the only difference. Well, Haiti, you know, Haiti and the Dominican is a little bit different. It's, it, it's, it's definitely a boat stop. Puerto Rico is the same thing. Um, and, it, and it just depends on which natives you got mixed up with, too. Like, we got mixed up with the natives that were here in America. Another set of... Um, or group got mixed up with, you know, Tianos. The different natives. But they're all still natives. Again, like the, you know, like the, the language is different. But there's different, you know, indigenous people on every place that you landed. Because it's like we were just talking about. The, the, um, the people who settled or, you know, quote unquote colonized. They didn't show up to a place where there was nobody there. There was always somebody yeah. You know, you just handle it when you get there. It's like you either do a a you know a smile and shake a you know shake it a hand like oh I'm here to make friends with you, <laughs> or nah. you just show up and you know you, or you just show up with your dick out. You just yeah no, <laughs> you start shooting before you even get off the boat like you just. You know. <laughs> but um so. Colorism is really is literally about using the, the offspring that you create through rape to um, further subjugate the people that you that you are um, enslaving because it 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 breaks them down psychologically, not just physically. So then that creates a divide and conquer, and divide and conquer is always working. Because we're talking about this today, and it still works. People still fall mm-hmm. for divide and conquer, like every time. So, yeah. um, and then because, like during slavery, like the one drop rule, you know, you have situations where it doesn't matter how much black blood you have, if you have just a little bit. Like, I just read somewhere where, um, I think, Charlamagne and the guy just gave somebody donkey of the day. He gave dude donkey of the day because it's a white cop in Michigan who did Ancestry, and he came out 18% black. And now everybody in his precinct is, like, har- harassing him and, you know, sending him hate. <laughs> <laughs> but it's I didn't know that. that one <laughs> It's like the one dropper was like, oh, okay, you're not white anymore. You're 18 percent black. You're black, blacky. Wow, That's, yeah. it's crazy how they it's crazy how they work though. Like, well, I'm sure but if like, everybody did that, they would come up with a little bit of a little bit of black in them. I'm sure yeah. they would too. I mean, we should everybody, talk about like, that. Like, what is that? Yeah. Is like that? where we at now? Like everybody would come up with a little bit of something in them. So it's not um it's not as <laughs> black and white as it would have been back then so <laughs> yeah, <that's>... black and white <laughs> <laughs> well I mean sometimes it can be because now we have different choices too, but we'll talk about that later um but no that but that's true it's like once you start going down the line some people have passed some people you know in in history have passed as whatever color because they were so fair skinned and they could pass and they did put themselves right back, you know, into the, the dominant situation. They wanted to get back, you know, with the oppressor so they didn't have to live this hard life or, you know, go through this hard existence. So, heck right. yeah, there's going to be some white people out there who, when they go to Ancestry, they're going to come up with some black jeans. Yeah. Is that your, um, um, a movie that y'all got me thinking about now with that uh where the girl she was like um her mom was black but her mom was working for the white woman that was taking care of her or something like that 
and she didn't want to she didn't want to um associate with her mom or something oh that's remember. imitation of life yep mm-hmm yeah that yeah, was a yeah, good one. yeah that's the one yeah that's the one. imitation of life that's the movie where the girl is passing and um her mother is black and her father was like really fair skinned right i didn't see that one and um lana turner plays the actress and then the mom dies at the end and the daughter like yeah. throws herself in the casket yeah that was a that was a heartbreaker that movie right there yeah that that was something else but that's a perfect example of what we're talking about today it is that's true and and it and, and it has a really nice um solo of um uh what's the name singing at the funeral the uh the gospel singer what was her name Erin? gospel singer uh i'm trying to think she was a really famous um gospel singer yeah, yeah. I, I, and I can't remember her name right now yeah hold on let's see uh that's the reason why it's good to have the internet right in front of you right here. Yeah, not me. Um, not me. She sang... What's that song called? Again? Why can't I remember it? This is crazy because I love that movie. Sandra <laughs> D was in that movie. I remember the first Who? time I saw it. Sandra D. She's like a, uh, a kind of a famous actress of that time period. I remember my... my um. Even... What time My period is this? Baby. Oh, this is like the 50s. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that. It's like the, ni- it's like the 1950s, 60s, something like that. Yeah, it's, it, it came out in 59. Mahalia Jackson. Mahalia uh, Jackson. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Mahalia Jackson. Man, um, y'all, y'all, took it, y'all took it way back. Yeah, we did, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should go watch that. So I'm trying yeah. to get some Mahalia Jackson on my iTunes. That but was I can't good. figure out my movie. Apple ID password. Excellent movie, and that was an excellent song too. Aaron, very good, very moving movie. So, yep. um, that first period, Aha. right there. Um, and so now we're gonna move into second period. Are you early for the school bell? Cutting first period short? Nah, not really, because first period was short, so we can get the definition in. And um, so now, since we've that in with that, because that was a perfect segue. Aaron, you were just on it today. <laughs> like, <Yeah. seriously. laughs> hey, you know, I'm trying. Um, <laughs> we're talking about preference, preferences versus psychosis. So. In our community now, the way colorism keeps presenting itself is this debate about light skin versus dark skin all the time. And you'll hear people, and I want to get you guys input on this because I'm like, I, I don't understand why this keeps happening. Like, why does, why do black men, because those three black men get all over social media or like publicly drag dark skinned women all the time. It's right. ingrained in their upbringing. Because, like, um, Gilbert Arenas made some these nasty comments about dark skinned women. Yes, like, he did. Horrible comments about dark skinned women recently. Uh, horrible comments about what? Well, what did he say? He um, was basically saying that there are, there are no women who are truly dark skinned and beautiful, and that dark skin is not beautiful. Oh wow! Yeah, that's ingrained in their societal upbringing. But I don't get. I guess I don't get why. Like, let's. And he says it's a preference. And people will say it's a preference. I, and I've heard this before. It's a preference. Where does preference stop and psychosis start? Um, I think preference uh, is one thing. But um, I don't know. When it comes to, like, you know, your interests, 
your interest in uh people <laughs> like that's a little that's a little different like you know i think that's uh I think that's a mental thing like you know it's mentally embedded in certain people to feel like mm -hmm. you know and, be, and because of exactly what you were talking about um to to feel like oh well this person may or may not be more dangerous and may or may not be uh innocent because you know they they look a certain way or you know that kind of thing well, you have certain you have certain perceptions of darker people based on just their skin tone, and that's built in society, though. It is. You know, it's not. It's not like a a blatant message like these type of people are usually the ones. Right. Well, I'm not gonna say it's not blatant because it is. It was blatant to a certain ex extent, but nowadays it's like the damage is done. It's already done. So even though they're not pushing that same message or those same images the damage is already done people already view it yeah, that way exactly that's like and that's a that's a lot of what it is even though people you know might cry preference or whatever like you know um it's still one of those things where you know we can't always tell either like even people that's conscious of the situation you can't always tell like you know uh you can't always just say right off the bat oh well um well, I'm interested in, uh, you know, darker women because of this. But you never know because it's always been um, stereotyped that uh, darker women are more promiscuous. They more sexual, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that that kind of thing, too. You know, so it's but like that always rat, that kind of thing that going on. And not, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah that's unfortunately, that's unfortunately that's the perception. I don't. I I see so many ratchet ass people who are of all shades. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Cardi B. Cardi B. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 I can't. I love something. I love something caught in my throat. I'm sorry. Well, I mean. <laughs> okay, like, but like, all right. Look. Your arena. But I'm oh, sorry. But do that, but, all right, so we bringing up Cardi B now, so, like, do that go back to the, um, uh, you know, and, well, the, uh, overcompensation of the lighter skin, the lighter skin person trying to fit in with that particular demographic? I don't, I don't know in her case. I think she's just ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> I already, I already told y'all. Like you know, it seemed more, it seemed a little more authentic for her. Know. We already know how you feel about how you feel about Cardi B. By this, it, by I this just, point in time, by this point in time, I feel like that's already a point of our little girl's upbringing. You know, not even just that they're overcompensating, just that that's what they think that's how they're supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, but you got people that you got lighter skinned people that like like we talk about all the time, like overcompensating for the fact that they lighter all the time, but in different ways. Like you might have somebody you might have somebody that's lighter that feel like, oh, I gotta be a little bit more ratchet to prove that I'm blacker. And you might have somebody that got that gotta carry themselves and say, Oh well, I'm a little more conscious and I you know, I'm for the people more so because, you know, right. I gotta overcompensate. That yeah. kind of thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that and that's it a might good be segue. It, it might be jumping the gun, but I think that's that's the point behind Sam's character on their white people. And I was just getting ready to, to go there, um, mm. to their white people. But the only thing I guess before we move off the Gilbert Arena, like I guess it's difficult for me to grasp him actually saying that there are no attractive dark skinned women, mm. and that men will tend to go out into the world and just like you don't see any other male like groups of males in different races just going out of their way to just diss a, their their women their own women right i've never yeah. seen that happen before well i feel like it's more effective coming from black men it's more what destructive it's more destructive Oh, it is, but him. I don't understand why, like, why are they doing this? And there's the no program. other explanation for it, like you just said, except for literally for the programming that you got during 
slavery slash colonialism. There's no other. There's no other explanation that I could think of. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause nothing. Like I don't even understand that part of it. Um. Like you know, just like saying saying stuff like that. Cause, um, you know, uh, what's considered attractive is like that's that's a personal preference. That's a you know what I'm saying. Or at least it at least you know it should be. I feel because when you think about it, um, you're like uh. I don't know. I don't know exactly what century it was in, but like, fat women used to be attractive in France. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, things the girls, you, you know, like, like the girls, right? Yeah, you know, certain cer- certain things are uh, or people, you know, certain people, certain things are attractive. You know, depending on um, you know, the what's, time what's, yeah, the time period was popular and that kind of thing. But it just but seemed like, you know, it's women. like y'all yeah. said, it's been conditioned for us to always put down, like, uh, darker skin people. Skin people. Kind of yep. Yep. And that's well, because... I feel like there's an agenda behind that. There is an agenda behind it because it keeps, it keeps you subordinated. It's always going to keep you subordinated if you're hating or your own on people who are, who are your own or who look like you. It keeps you divided so that I so you can't unite against your common enemy. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. But you don't yep. see, but like you don't see the women doing it. The women never do it. The women it, don't just go and air, kinda, air all that men out, though. They don't go in there and call them all ugly. I've never seen that happen. They, right. They, yeah. They're attacking each other, though. Women are attack, attacking each that's, other. That's true. They do that a lot. There's what a lot that? of men fighting. There's a lot of infighting with with um, with women in the, in the black community that can't get along with each other for a host of various reasons. But I've actually seen videos of light skinned women talking about y'all dark skinned women stop hating on us and just all this kind of ridiculous stuff that I don't understand. But I'm brown. Brown people don't usually get picked on much because we're in the middle. What you said. It's sad. We should all be picked on equally. No, we shouldn't. Nobody should be picked on. <laughs> I hate you. Nobody should be picked on at all. <laughs> so, dear white people, and we, we, the, when Ann was just talking about dear white people, he's talking about this TV show on Netflix by written, directed, and co-produced by Justin Simeon. Not the movie, however, they're both touching the same thing. Mm-hmm. So Sam's the TV, character... The TV show was done better. By I the way. So. Um, yeah. Sam is, is biracial. Mm-hmm. And her friend Coco is dark. So on that particular show, the way the show is set up, everybody has their own individual episode and you kind of get to see what each one of them goes through. How did you like that the setup between Sam and Coco? I thought it was realistic. How they okay. they were friends, they were close, they were tight, and but they both had different expectations or goals that they wanted to get from their circles. They both Wait a minute, Wayne, was was Coco the was Coco the best friend or was Coco like the frenemy? The frenemy. Coco was a, well, Coco started out as her best friend, remember? She was her best uh, friend at one point. Well, because yeah. the other, her, her best friend was, uh, what was her name? The other one. I don't remember her name and I feel bad for um, that. I, I actually do know her name. She's, she was, she's dark skinned too. Yeah. Um, Oh my God! But I can't. What? Oh my God! I can't I remember her name, and I felt bad. I felt bad right. for it. And that's an and that's another thing, because even she was playing like second fiddle to the situation. Mm-hmm. She did. She did because yeah. every dude, it seemed like every dude was just like, oh my God, the biracial. She was like, damn. <laughs> she was like Coco to the other extreme. Right. And I thought I thought but, that was well done. The, that was well done the way the show writers did that too because. They made a point to make her be that way, but they didn't. They didn't emphasize it. I, I think that they they did and they didn't for a reason. And it's funny you should say that. I do. I like the fact because with Coco, 
her struggle was her being dark, but they didn't just tell you that. They showed you right. her character right. as a child first. And that's what my thing was. Why didn't they ever show... Because Sam is biracial. Why don't they ever show Sam's biracial struggle? They show, they show her more so adjusting in adult life. Like... They like do. the episode where she met where she met White Bay's friends, like she clicked with them almost instantly. Like there, that the interaction, I think, is something to pay attention to. The way that she interacted with his white friends. I think so too, because she has one white, you know, parent. So the quite but we don't know which. Not in the show, right. we don't. Right. Yeah, they don't. They don't go too much into that. So the question becomes, where is she really most? comfortable and, and that's why I Coco. said before that's why I said before like I feel like most of the characters are like playing into the roles that they fell into into college but once they graduate they're not going to still be in those same roles I feel like the only characters that really learned something during the process of the show was like Troy and Coco so okay that's interesting what did Coco learn like Coco learned like if she's not but for one she learned more t- that no matter how she carries herself, no matter what she does, she's still gonna be the black girl on the right. No matter how educated she is, no matter how how celebrated she is, how decorated she is, she's still gonna be the black girl on the room. I think she already knew that. She knew that and she was figuring, you know, if you keep quiet and keep your head down that, you know, you can change the system from the inside or whatever, but she she got a quick glimpse of yeah. how little that actually matters. Yep. That's true. I think so too, and I think, I think unfortunately she's learned how to, to play um, a role more so from the most negative standpoint that you possibly can. Right. I, right, I, I, right, I like. Right. She's like the, I mean, the negative she learned some, Yeah, she, like she learned something, but it probably isn't anything good. <laughs> 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 so based off based off what we saw in the show, would y'all say like that um like the whole colorism thing affects women or uh uh black women or black men more? That's a I think really, really, really good question. They they both they were they're both affected by it but it's in different ways. I think it's more it's more prevalent in black women simply because of the fact that and this is just me. This is just my opinion. But women tend to be more emotional with 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 their handling and their the perception of things. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I probably agree with that. And um, only because like we've seen plenty of times where it's like you might see like uh, uh, the social climate change where it's like oh well, uh, uh, light skinned uh, women are more attractive, more attractive and then like you know, like, you know uh, uh it has an effect that has an, uh, a huge effect like, on like, like you know, darker women dark, like questioning like, their like, beauty and that kind of thing you know um, um and like a lot of times like guys don't like, deal guys with don't it like so like, you know, even though not to say that none of us deal with it but um it's different it just seemed to be less effective in that area yeah yeah Oh, so the um the uh the best friend's name is Joel, by the way. I didn't know oh. that. See, see, okay. I'm completely caught off guard by that. I'm sorry. The best friend's name is Joel. Number one, number two. <laughs> I agree and I disagree with you guys. I think that women suffer more from it, but I think it's again, it, it, it's your fault. It's you penises again, <laughs> inserting yourself <laughs> where no one at no. <laughs> We are affected by the things that men do. So when men largely keep telling, like Gilbert Arenas keeps telling us over and over again, that one, a, a group of us is more sexually attractive than the other group, you just now have created an infighting dynamic between us, where yeah, we might right. not have had one before. So now all the dark women hate these light-skinned bitches. Exactly, so and it could be, and it could work. It could, it could work the other way around. Like you could have um, a situation where it's like, um, uh, let's say the darker skinned woman get picked. You know what I'm saying? As the first choice in the movie, and she played, and the light skinned woman playing second fiddle, like house party, 
or uh, Martin and stuff like that, like where the um, light skinned woman playing second fiddle, and then it's like you know, and that the light skinned woman like they they questioning their beauty in society or amongst black men and that kind of thing. Well, that it, it rarely happens. The flip. Yeah, it, it rarely happens, but I'm saying like you know it. Like the point me and Anthony were trying to make is that like you know women, you know are more affected in that sense because that could possibly happen too. Well, and, and I, I definitely think we're more affected. However, there, okay, so I've had people, I've seen videos about this too and have it, had it argued the other way where they're, like the, the privilege between light-skinned and dark-skinned men is flipped the other way because the dark-skinned men are generally nowadays they are like back in the 80s back when i was young the um the light-skinned brothers were still in <laughs> everybody went to look like at the bar to have curly hair and shit but i'll be sure g money yeah i'll be sure <laughs> and you know if you ate you know mulatto you know those stupid um right. because they actually were they were biracial you know so the bar children had one black parent and one white parent so they were not just like quote unquote you know like mixed with a bunch of stuff because of slavery they were mixed because two people chose to get married who were of different races yeah so the, you know they they come out looking like they look and in the 80s it was all about dudes that look like like them and the girls like all oh, just drooled and stuff but then the 90s came in and the black men took took the baton and never gave it back. It's like, they ain't been in since then. Like, it's always, <laughs> always been in these dark. You, you, know what's, you know what's funny about that? Like, the the reason it's flipped like that, I think, is because, like we said, like, darker is always associated with more aggressive. So, like, if you mm-hmm. if you a lighter, if you a lighter dude, you perceive as softer, you know? Yep. That's true. And, and you're like, so like when it when it come to when it come to women like you don't want you know what I'm saying you don't want your woman to be more aggressive. aggressive you don't want her to be you know you want her, you know more softer you know what I'm saying loving that kind of thing so lighter right. is the preference in that situation that's that that's true and that's what I think it is too Aaron I think it's still, like it's directly because of that did we lose answers to this? no I'm still here I'm sorry oh, okay. I'm just taking it all in taking it all in. Yeah, yeah, because I think, I think, I think you're right, Aaron. I think it's definitely that. It's like, you want your men to be hard, you want your women to be soft. So you want your men to be soft. <laughs> right, right. You want your, you want your women to be light, like that actually, because I mean, there are some hard rock women out there, like Cardi mm-hmm. B, and there are some nice, <laughs> <laughs> there are some nice, sweet, soft, you know, darker skin, you know, women, like, like, um, I would argue like um, Lapita. I think she's very sweet. You know, she seems very sweet, Who? very thin. Lapita? Yeah, Lapita. N- Wongo or whatever her name is. Yeah, yeah, the, the actress. That you know what? Oh, okay. You know what? Look what Arena said about her. He said she was only cute when the lights when the were lights are out. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. See that's that type of that type of ignorance is. right there is inexcusable. Right. That type of ignorance just shows how scarred not only he is, but the people that brought him up, the people that he grew up around. They're all mm-hmm. deeply scarred. And because he didn't I think mean, there was anything wrong with those comments. He does, and and he got with a, a super light skinned chick. That chick that plays on um, Love and Hip Hop. Not loving hip hop, excuse me. The other ratchet show. What's the other ratchet show? The one in Shawnee. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, you can't ask me. Specific uh, housewives. Um, I don't watch none of those. Um, um, housewives. Uh, yeah. basketball housewives. That's what housewives. Basketball wives of Los Angeles. I don't watch none of that shit. I know of it, but I don't watch it. So. Right. Um, but uh, that's the uh, that's second period right there. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. it's now time for Ant to give us that out to lunch individual. The out to lunch individual 
for this week seems to be Lil Kim. <laughs> now, you made a good point earlier, Aaron, by bringing her up as an example, because she's like our version of Michael Jackson. Oh shit! In terms of the massive, the massive transformation that happened from the time we first saw her till now. And like during the whole conversation, I just been on Google looking at pictures, comparing like Little Kim back in the day to Little Kim now, and like I can't yeah. imagine. I just can't see the people in her circle telling her that these changes are good changes. Like this was a good look at all. That's a good idea. Like, well, that's a, a good point. Who the hell is she talking to that thinks this is a good idea? Yeah, who's encouraging these transformations? Because like she don't even look is like a person Diddy? anymore. Is it Diddy? She don't even. I don't think it's Diddy. I like to think Diddy's a little more straightforward. Diddy got that. Well, we already we already agreed that like celebrities in general just don't have a good grasp on reality anyway. So. No, they don't. I don't know, but you can't look at Lil Kim's face and tell me that she looks good. And I don't care look, how famous she you looks are. White. She has. She has opened up. The floodgates of Ambi and 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 purchase all of this skin bleaching she, cream. She and don't. She, she don't look. It it doesn't look like something I would fuck. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> she just don't. She do got like a leather face thing going on. It's oh like god. horror movie horror movie type. Oh my god, this is horrible. Like I can't. She has slathered herself in Ambi skin bleaching cream and she has said I am white and she's going to reverse Rachel Dolezal no but this is another example of a celeb meeting somebody to sit down and talk to who is she talking to I feel like she asked Puffy and he was like uh huh uh huh Take that, take that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, I mean, Lil' Kim was beautiful. She was beautiful when she first came out. She's bad. I thought she was, she was too. She but was. she didn't, she didn't think she make was. Any adjustments. And that's the problem. Did you see what her own comments were about that? Like when they asked I've been, her, I couldn't the, find, I couldn't find her, I couldn't find her comments. She like uh, that's what I was looking for. I can't remember, but like she. From what I can remember, I think it was like a Twitter, some kind of Twitter, a Twitter or exchange, something. or yeah, something where uh, she was talking about how she was simply passed over for women who were lighter, they were complexed her whole life. Um, let's just talk about Biggie passing her over for everything light skin moving. But see. <laughs> As black as Biggie was, I can't believe that he was putting her down for her complexion. Yeah, I'm sure he was. Because a lot of times what happens is the darker you are, the lighter you want somebody because the more you hate your own skin and vice versa. Yeah, and Biggie had faith in the pocket. And then he had Charlie Baltimore, who was also the same complexion as Faith, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She she took him to the extreme, though. She did a photo of Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah. Well, Michael yeah, Jackson we, well, my kid had never. I mean, was, was it ever proven that he bleached his skin? Well, he, he. I mean, he, look at him. He said he had vitiligo. That was his his excuse for years. Is that he had vitiligo, and that um, okay. in order so for his skin to be bleached. So is it unanimous that that's BS? <laughs> yeah, I think it's BS. Because vitiligo don't, don't affect your hair. Not. I don't know if it is. Well, he was a skin jelly curl. He was getting a deep, you know, a deep wave. Yeah, he was in an accident too, though, you know. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. He did. He got hit by those sparks mm-hmm. in that Pepsi commercial back in the day, mm-hmm. 1980. Mm-hmm. What? He really did that. That happened. Man. <laughs> I that was that was, but that was caused by the chemicals in his hair. That wasn't caused by a bit of light off. No, it was definitely caused by a spark that came off like some kind of contraption when they were filming the Pepsi commercial that that made contact with the moisturizer and the activator that was in his hair from his jerry curl. Yes. Yeah. So he was already trying to whiten his hair. If he wasn't trying no, to whiten his hair, he wouldn't have had that problem. Everybody, I had a jerry curl. We all had a jerry curl. Just stop. Man, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. 
and 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 um, chicks have perms, so it's not like you know. I can't wait till we get to the next episode and we start talking about hair. That's gonna be a really deep shit. Oh gosh, we're talking, we're we're talking to... about people's jerry curls right now. <laughs> like if he wasn't trying to, he wasn't trying to whiten his hair. He wouldn't have had those problems. Who's trying to whiten their hair? He Michael, was just Michael trying Jackson. To... <laughs> I, I guess I was too, because I had a freaking Jerry Curl in the Everybody uh, had a Jerry Curl in the 80s. He's doing a Detroit red, a Detroit red. So I'm oh on looking God. at pictures of people with vitiligo, and they got like patches and stuff. It's like hair and hair. But Mike missing. had money, so then what you do is you do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all the like, he colors. just wanted to, like, he didn't want to look strange, name? so, you know, he is just like, uh, filled in the rest. Or that model, yeah, what's that model? Like, that new model who got vitiligo. Oh, I saw her. She's pretty. She's gorgeous. But I her like vitiligo, her. her vitiligo isn't like covering all bases at the same time. Well, I think what he did was because his skin was changing colors, he just bleached it all so that shit all was one color as opposed Mike to. Mike ain't had no, Mike ain't had no damn vitiligo. He had no <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm going to say Mike didn't have vitiligo. I don't, cause I don't well, know Mike, if he did or not. He didn't. He didn't have no vitiligo. How did his babies come out white? Because he was with a white woman. He got like little Native American babies. They're not even Native American. They look Native American. They look straight white to me. They look like Molly Sam. <laughs> 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 they, like they was babies, they look like they look Native American. They look like part. Native American. Now they just look straight up white. Oh wow. So so let me ask you a question. So okay, so we talked about talked about little Kim bleaching her skin, Mike bleaching his skin. Charlemagne, um, Charlemagne. Oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a really coming man. What about what about like Tyrese trying to sneak his black queen in? Which black queen is this? The one that he keep calling, he keeps saying is black, but everybody look at her and go, what the hell are you talking about? Tyrese? I heard Tyrese got some issues. <laughs> oh, oh, this chick, uh, is she black? I, we don't know. Wait, she don't, she don't, I wouldn't call her black. And she, she don't look black, she girl. She doesn't call herself black either. She don't look, she don't look, she might be mixed to some extent. No, she, I mean, she definitely is. She's a mutt from, sorry, oops. She's, <laughs> she's, she's, she's a mongrel, sort of like a mix of a lot of different things. Mm. When you kind of look at, like when she talks about what her ethnicity is and she breaks down her race and where she comes from. Because like we've established ethnicity, culture, heritage, and your race are very different from one another. You're not, right. Hispanic is not your race. Spanish so she, is not. Racially ambiguous. She's racially ambiguous, yeah. I don't know, but, I mean. She but I guess Spanish. based on that one drop, let's see, based on that one drop rule, and that's why we, we keep, like, we talk about that. Is that a thing? Like, do, are you black now? Because, because Ancestry.com says you were 18% black. Is that his black woman? I feel like the rule of thumb is if you're not white, you're some part black. Part black. Can 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 Rachel? Is Rachel out? To, or is Rachel? Does Rachel have a point? Can can Rachel, can Rachel Nova? say? Nova? Yeah. <laughs> she all, she's all white though. She's all white. She's like literally just white. Her both of her parents are white. She's like Polish or some shit. Yeah. Who? Nate Rachel Dozal. Uh, we should read her book. <laughs> oh hell no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think she's definitely out to lunch though. Certainly. Indeed. I mean, you can't be mad at her. I mean, she got some some chops and fell in love with the whole struggle. (laughs) Can't be mad at her. And here's the question. Because we're talking about how race is really just a social construct and it's not real. Uh, Can that mean 
that she does not feel white. No. White is not something you feel. Black is not something you feel. Something you are. But but remember, there's a difference between the color of your skin, part of your race, and the social attachment because of your race. So Uh, she may only feel like I am white because my skin is white, but as a person, I don't feel like I am a white person. So she's trans, right? She doesn't feel like she is culturally white. Well, culturally, she can. She could have been raised black, but we know that she wasn't. Okay. So, okay. What What about somebody like Eminem? Eminem culturally could have been raised black, but that don't change the fact that he's a white boy. But but can he can he claim the culture? Like can can Tina Marie claim the culture? Because Tina Marie, we let her be honorarily black. <laughs> and we all and we all fucking know that we do. She's we honor you. And she got two white ass parents. Yeah. Or even a more a more a more tangible example is like Maureen. Maureen is Peruvian, but she was raised by white people. So culturally speaking, she's like I- Irish or whatever. Mhm. Oh wow. Mhm. This race thing is complicated as hell now. It's our own yeah. fault. It is our own fault. <laughs> because we because we have to keep separating ourselves and be so damn tribal about everything. Instead yeah. of I mean, is just, it, I mean, is it like a fault or is it like you know this is just bound to happen anyway because of the whole situation? That, no, you know, I don't think it was. About. I don't think it was bound to happen. I think that somebody set it in motion. And it got yeah. carried out of out of proportion. It got you know turned out of out of line. It got taken out of line. Yeah, but I mean, America is like a melting pot now. Like it's not, you know. Was it ever really a melting is it, pot? Is it? Is it really? <laughs> no. I mean, when, not- y'all know what I mean when I say that. It's not like uh, it's not like in other places where like you know it's you not like. Uh, one one religion or one culture or whatever. Exactly. But no, like, we invite- but no other place is really like that either. Like everything that's happened here has happened everywhere else too. Like you have pockets of people who are black everywhere. You have pockets of people who are a, a bunch of different races in every place that you go. Mm-hmm. Every city, every except, state, every country. Except, except Switzerland. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's a ghetto those, in every, those, every country. Well, those are really Nordic places, they have somehow kept their shit really white. Yeah. But no, everywhere else, everywhere, literally everywhere, there are people who are not white. And they live in the hood. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I'm with you on this one, Anthony. Like, this is not... My problem is this, is that when people are into this tribalism so heavily, which we are, we don't we don't really stand out from the animals in the animal kingdom. Like we have the ability to think and not stick our penis in everything because penises and <laughs> and not and not do crazy shit. But we don't do it. We don't. So even if you have the ability to use your brain, if you're not using it, what's the point? You don't use it, you lose it. If you're not raising above to actually use your your brain, something that actually makes sense. You know what I mean? It's like why are you why are you grouping yourselves up according to something that's not real, just so you can so you can come in and like fight with other people and and screw all their women and kill all their men? Like why right. are you? Doing it? And it's it's easy to say like we're programmed to do that, but like when do you draw the line and start making changes or making an effort to change this stuff? Yeah. Like if you're aware if you're aware that you're programmed to do it, then that means you're aware enough to change it. Yep. Because I mean, a bear, a bit like bears aren't gonna be able to do that. They're bears. Like, and if they're a black bear, a white bear, you know, a polar bear, and a brown bear, they don't give a shit about 
their actual color. All they care about is that you are not me, and now I'm gonna fight you. Mm-hmm. But they're but they're animals. They're not people. But if it's mating season, the brown bear is not gonna hump a polar bear. Brown bear is gonna look for another brown bear. That is very true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I don't know. What about polar bears and pandas? Did that happen? Polar bears and pandas would never happen. That would never that happen. Different, completely different places too, because brown and black <laughs> polar bears and panda bears are not in the same region at yeah, all. They're segregated. They're segregated. They're segregated from each other. We, so I didn't even know it was a such thing as bear apartheid. What's going on on these streets? Bear, bear apartheid. apartheid. Do you know? And during apartheid, um, um, and we're getting ready to come back from. Um, from lunch, but during apartheid, what happened was they actually split people up based on colorism. So it was blatant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Trevor Noah was talking about that too. Yep. He's talking about how his parents had to hide them. And isn't that crazy? That is crazy. That is crazy. I couldn't imagine living like that. But yeah. I mean. He said that the reason it, it happened, the reason it got over was because the people who let it happen. The people who let themselves be brainwashed to this, this, this ideology, they didn't, they didn't resist it. And I don't, it, why does that, I mean, is it because we, because we are trusting? Lazy, mostly because we're lazy. Because, like, think of the Native Americans here, or you know, those that, that are indigenous to this country, they thought that they were being friendly to the people who came here. They were at, they were, first. at first, and at first. and that changed. and you do understand that they attempted the those settlers that came here, largely um, English and then Dutch, Dutch. They attempted to enslave the Native Americans first before they attempted to before they brought the trans and um, Atlantic um, slave trade mm. about but they couldn't enslave the natives because it's like showing up to somebody else's home turf trying to annihilate them like they have the home court advantage on you court advantage on you they know the whole land the whole terrain they weren't able to enslave them that, that did them a lot of good well, so, they, they owned slaves, slaves too. Some of them did. Yeah. I was I was amazed to find that out. Yeah. Well, I mean, some some black folks actually owned slaves. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you know, a lot of twisted, backwards things happen when history when is history full of WTF moments. It is full of WTF moments. Sir. It's really crazy. So we talked about. Um, Little Kim and skin bleaching, and skin ble- like skin bleaching has been a thing too in different skin cultures, especially and reconstructive surgery. Yep, especially in cultures where colonialism was a thing, where it had a massive impact. Yep. Um. So light skin privilege, and we talked about that a little bit when we're talking about Samantha and um, Jerry White. Right. Like. She- like all the dudes were all drooling over her and wanted her, and and even the sorority that Coco, the dark skinned girl, wanted to get into. Mm-hmm. You know, like they showed they actually wanted Sam, but Coco was like having to crawl over her hands and knees to get in. They dogged her hair, and then she went and got a weave. Like all these things that they show you about light skin, dark skin. Like, you know, Sam's hair is, is, is you know, long and flowing naturally. Yeah, yeah. And kinky. Well, to play, uh, like, to play devil's advocate, too, like, um, I think, I think the attractive, like, the attractiveness of Sam, uh, uh, can, um, can, um, can be part of, like, her confidence, like, too, like, you know, like, her, her confidence. Like, she seemed more sure she about herself than Coco, you know. I don't know. I think I thought I thought Coco was just beautiful. She was gorgeous. She was. You know, I feel like I feel like Sam was overcompensating. Because like it might have been because she did talk about that. She said, and now Sam's character did talk about that in different places. Yeah, yeah. 
It, it might have been, it might have been subconsciously, but she was overcompensating for her biracial. Yeah, life. I mean, yeah, of course. But I'm talking about like at first perception, like you know, like your perception of Sam is being more confident. Yeah. Uh, uh, her situation and Coco was like Coco was just like well and you know you know like, she carried herself everywhere it was like well like why am I not attractive enough like you even see the you know like you know not the um not the people that didn't see the spoilers but like you know the part where um, uh the whole wig the whole wig thing, you know trying to hide herself yeah 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 like she wasn't oh, I forgot about the, the the freaking spoiler alert. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> we can mess the spoiler alerts up big time. <laughs> like, spoiler alert. There spoiler are alert. spoiler alerts all through this right now. Yeah, Oops. but but yeah, like um that can play a part in like, you know, um somebody being attractive than um another, another person too. Person too. On top of the top fact of that, the you know, like we talked about like she's light skin, so yeah. So yeah. So, but at the same time, I feel like Coco's thing was like dying to fit in somewhere. Yeah, I think so too. But so was Sam. Sam, yeah, it wasn't as it wasn't as prevalent an idea with her. Like you kind of had to peep it. Really? Yeah, like they didn't, they didn't, they didn't put that out there. They didn't present that as an idea. Idea. It was going on the whole time. But you kind of had to peep it. Well, no, because like, okay, I remember when she's talking about how the um, the BSU won't include them, and she said, yeah. like, "Why would the BSU think I want to be down?" So she yeah. she yeah. she kind of lets you know that she feels, and then Coco starts revealing certain things that she confided in her about, you know, or they're talking about dear white people before she ever got her show. Like, there's one there white people, you know, um, just because you, you know, are trying to show your parents and everybody else that you're so cultured, you don't just start bringing me home, you know, for Thanksgiving. Right, right, right. right. And showing me off as your black friend. So, yeah, I mean, I we do, like, but at the same time, see it, some of her struggle. At the same time, that was something that was, that was presented in, like, in passing. That was, like, in between the main parts of that episode. That episode. It, I, I, but I think that's because that was considered Coco's episode. Yeah, yeah. So you do get a whiff of, and the clincher is when she walks, when Coco is pissed about <laughs> about Sam's radio program because she like auto tuned her. Yeah. yeah. And she marches down there, and she's like, "Oh, it's Coco and the Marshmallows," and she shows up to her show. And she says to her, you get away with more because you look more like them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So is light skin privilege really a thing? Like Jesse Williams gets on stage on the, the 2016 BET Awards and does a whole rant about race. Could a, could a dark skin black man get on stage and do that? No, Jesse no. Williams should have a subtitle, and his subtitle is "You had me at hello." That- <laughs> why? Why is that his subtitle? That's his sub because, like, because of his physical appearance, he are he yeah. automatically yeah. has a larger part of the audience's attention. And and you don't think that that has anything to do with light skin? Like, you think a dark skin black man? It absolutely does. It absolutely does. Okay. Okay. You have Jesse Williams, aka you had me at hello. And Jesse Williams did have me at hello. And before I found out that he <laughs> that he possibly left his wife for maybe this white chick. Like I I don't care who people love, but it it does disappoint me. I feel like mm-hmm. like like the episode like where Sam bypasses the brother to get with dude you're like but 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 what you but the struggle right, how do how do we explain uh Kaepernick and all the hell he catching up because they expect him as a sports figure I think to go to, to somewhere you know because he's in the the other industrial complex 
I want to just take this moment right now to address all of my friends and family members on Facebook who talk all that trash on the offseason about boycotting the NFL and now they're all into trash and they're all into their teams going to do this and their teams going to do that. This is why we can't get nowhere as a people because y'all have y'all stepped in this protest thing and this, this, this outrage thing and we're not going nowhere. Not going nobody's nowhere. serious nobody's about it. Mm, I concur, my brother. I just wanted to put that out there. I, I still haven't watched anything with the NFL stamp on it. I'm the only one, though. No, I can't do it by myself. So, so you're the, like you're literally protesting this. Yeah, the NFL yeah. and the NBA. And I'm I'm putting my fist up at you right now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And you can't see it, but you can't see it. My fist is up in solidarity with you. <laughs> Power to, 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 to no sports watching people right now. Like, I can't, not, I can't, I can't. Like, Kaepernick, he had the right idea. I feel like he put his foot in his mouth when he didn't go out there and vote, though. Hmm. I he feel like, somebody. I feel like the life skin privilege for some reason is not working for him. See, that's, that's the that point I was trying to make, though. Because yeah. his, they, his, platform, his platform, his platform, his platform yeah. don't involve, don't just involve color folks. It's like everybody's involved. White folks got involved with that. Like light skin and dark yeah, skin don't matter. The white right. folks are still just a nigga. Yeah, I think you so might be say, right so about so that. You say, you say that more, that more black and people more watch Grey's uh, uh, Anatomy. Uh, <laughs> 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 they might have watched it during watch during that that uh, that, uh, that drama. That drama. I think a lot of I think it depends. It might depend, Aaron, on who's watching it. Like, what's the demographic of those shows? For what's the demographic of sports? True, right? Yeah, you got more. True. You got more women. Because Grey's Anatomy is like, like, yeah, women. Yeah, women yeah. watch Grey's Anatomy. And and women are going to support. Like like you said before, they may be more emotional, and they're going to give more support with things like that whereas men are gonna be like fuck that shit get your ass out there and <laughs> fucking catch the ball like yeah, right, yeah. You to do. that's that's something that irritates me too they always like when they say something they don't like they're like oh just get out there and catch the ball do what we pay you to do but then when it's something that you care about they're like well why don't our athletes speak up more often or why don't our entertainers speak up more often yeah that's true hey it's Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay. I know she's right. She's, she's protesting with you. <laughs> she's co she's co signing. He's like, hell co-signing. yeah. Uh-huh. Bro, bro. <laughs> but I definitely think Yeah, it got me to it got me to Go ahead. Um, uh, that whole Kaepernick whole situation, um, uh-huh. I mean, the thinking, um, um, not even just not even Jesse Williams too, and people, and people that were being attacked, attack, uh, uh, the way they were the way for they saying certain things. things. Certain things. The argument, the argument with um a with lot of white folks is like like well well you get you get paid and you get all this money so what are you complaining about that kind of thing like and I feel like um that don't have that don't have shit to do with shit like you know like it does. you know what, what I hear when the, I hear that I hear you're a well paid nigga go sit down yeah we're treating That's you well I mean. just like just like when Michelle Obama was saying something about how the White House was built by slaves. And then yep. Bill O'Reilly came back saying they were well taken care of, they were well fed. It's the same shit. It is. Exactly. It's like, why are you complaining? You're well fed. Like, you're, it's almost like saying you're bought Right, yeah. Or, right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I believe that, that type of, like that type of shit. mindset, <laughs> that type of mindset that, um, that um creates this money culture is like it bleeds into everything like like we were talking about like we talk about that in hip hop too like how money culture bleeds into it and it's like as yep. long as, as long as you getting paid you know what are you, you know what are you complaining about like you know yeah you know, like dignity, I was talking no, with no somebody integrity. about that earlier like um well you know why are you attacking this person because um like I shouldn't be attacking somebody who I feel that is damaging the culture Tyler Perry. <laughs> Um, with your what is like one dimensional right with your one dimensional caricatures of black people and your bullshit I'm not gonna co-sign that bullshit just because it's making a whole lot of money 
that, because that, it's popular. That, it's fucking blood money as far as I'm concerned. It's like Nino yeah. Brown raping what? the fucking hood and then you forgive him because he comes through with some fucking Thanksgiving turkey. Fuck that shit. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck yeah, exactly. Fuck. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but I mean, yeah, people I, have this mindset where if it's profitable, it must be right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Or like, some folks got like that. Jesse Williams got a little bit of backlash. Like, people were like, some people were like, well, why does he need to stand up and do that? Because, you know, he's well paid. And he, I mean, he, he's always been though and has always presented himself. I don't know what Kaepernick did, but Jesse Williams has always presented himself basically as an activist. Yeah. I wouldn't know. Okay. Well, I didn't follow. I didn't really <laughs> know who Jesse William was until that whole thing. Yeah, I always watch him. I would watch Grey's Anatomy with the sound down. <laughs> I, I like to watch it. I'm not even really always into. It. I don't care about color, like colors per se. He's just really. I always thought him to be very powerfully sexy for some reason. Like to watch. <laughs> nice to look at. Yeah, well, like I, I've never and I like I've never watched Grey's Anatomy like ever. I've never seen one episode of Grey's Anatomy, really? so I have no idea. I had no idea who Jesse Williams was. Well, okay, so I know that back to the white people. I know that Sam's character was largely based on like an Angela Davis. Okay, uh, and like arguably like in the movement back in the day you know she was light-skinned too um and just like the new angela davis like angela rye she's on tv yelling and screaming and me and anna talked about this before too she's light-skinned and she's allowed to yell and scream mm-hmm. people are cool with that because oh, she had you at hello why do you keep referring to light-skinned privilege as having you at hello <laughs> yeah yeah hello <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a common, that's a common uh, thing. You had me at, you had him at hello until you open your mouth and say some radical shit. But it's too late because you already got everybody's attention. I get. Oh my gosh, you had me at hello and then you started talking. Uh huh. That's exactly what's going on. I was like, oh, you're one of those angry Negroes. We uh-huh. thought you were safe. We thought your ass was safe. <laughs> but it's too late. You already gave her the platform. She already up there. But see, I think. I think people allow Angela. I think they let Angela Rye get up there and do that. I I love the fact that she does that too. Me too. Because she's a complete kind to Tommy Lauren. She gets up there and she does the exact opposite of what. (laughs) Every time I say it, you got what? Yes, we know. We know. You know what? It goes to her every freaking week. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Bill O'Reilly that one week. Bill O'Reilly got it that one week. Oh, fuck Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> fuck him with a falafel. Fuck a you falafel. with a falafel, Bill. Because he kept talking about having sex with that chick. Apparently. And he kept, like, there was some sort of, I think the transcript that she, that, that the chick was actually um, talking about, the, the, the mm. former, um, the, the, uh, that, that worked there, she was talking about how he called her and was, like, having phone sex without her consent, basically. <laughs> oh, that's such a horrifying thought. Thank you. And, <laughs> and she, that's she horrible. Was, and he kept telling her to rub herself with a falafel. <laughs> Which <laughs> is that? Is that sexy to older rich white folks? No, apparently what he really meant was a loofah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't realize that's what it was How do you get the two mixed up? What kind of circles does he run in that he gets the two mixed up? Well, apparently he um is. He believes that a falafel. I don't know. Like he, I don't know. Colorism is it because of colorism? Is that because he thinks anything that that size and shape and brown is a falafel? (laughs) (laughs) I don't. I don't know. know. So here's my here's a good here's my last question. This is this is a good question because this is the question of the day. 
all these different interracial marriages happening now. And like, like the other is going to start being a large part of our society and community because of choices that people have. Like Mm -hmm. what, what happens when you have children that came, didn't come out of like, you know, a forced situation. They came out of choice. Like they pick a side generally and get on it. Like that's what they do. Me personally, I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with the fact that picking a side is the natural, uh, is the expectation. Like, why do you have to pick a side? Because your because dad's what black else and your would mom's you, white. Because what else would you do? Why can't you accept both sides of your your heritage? You can do that. You, you can accept both sides, but you're going to wind up subscribing to one culture more than you okay. are the other. I guess that depends on how you're raised then. Like if you're if you're a biracial baby, you if you're that. a biracial mm-hmm. baby and you're raised in the suburbs, you might subscribe more to the white side of your heritage. Right. But if you're a biracial baby and you're raised in the hood, you might subscribe more to the black side of your heritage, which is fucked up in itself. It kind of is, and it, I guess it kind of it's a, it, it's almost an is what it is situation like what do you do about it I think it starts at home and sometimes it's picked sometimes it's picked for you unfortunately because again because of colorism because of your skin tone you may have people now putting it up like putting that upon you like kind of like Coco like Coco forced herself and like insinuated herself with the white people they didn't come looking for her that was her last ditched effort, though. I mean, nobody else was accepting of her. Yeah, and she they tried had to think, she tried to think with the system. They and they played her out. But see how Sam, like Sam, could have gone either. Like Sam, because she is biracial, she had a choice of what side that she going to jump on. Yeah, true. Yeah, but at the same time, you know. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, the side gonna pick you. (laughs) Like, you know, even if you don't pick a side. Yeah, a lot of times. Right, regardless of how you, you know, how you uh, uh, carry yourself or think, uh, you know, well, this is what I identify with more. Yeah, you identify with their side more, but, you know, society gonna say, well, and not really. You know what I'm saying? That's, Depending that's why on. I said earlier. That's why I said earlier. Like it's a rule of thumb. If if you're not all white, then you're some part, some kind of black, or right. something along yeah. those lines. Because that's how society. I call that, society the, um, I call that the the uh, the OJ Simpson slash Tiger Woods wake up call. Uh huh. Yeah, I see unfortunately, that. Unfortunately, you know, you jump on that side. You know, and now OJ is not biracial, but Tiger was. So, you right. know, Tiger tr- Tiger attempts to assimilate based on his made up, you know, Cabernetian. Cabernetian. How come he couldn't just take Blasian and just left it at that? It didn't include and, everything. <laughs> oh, brother. Anyway, so that he comes tried from people's, that. people's irrational need to label everything. That's true, but I mean, he he came here in a world that was already made. It's difficult. Then what do mm-hmm. you do? So he showed up here. He's like, I want to be this, and they were like, No, Negro, mm-hmm. you, are right, not, exactly. you are now a Negro. Just so you know. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Regardless of regardless of what you know, regardless of how he see it, you know, he always gonna be marked down as African American. <laughs> One of her brothers. Mm. Well, not well. Now he is after he fucked up really. I mean, but it was gonna be in the back of in the back of everyone's mind. Yeah, pretty much. Like you know, regardless of you know, like I said, like you can sit there and um claim whatever um side of the fence you want, but you know, like it would have been Tiger Woods, the first black this or the first black yeah. that or uh, at the, the end black of the, one. Right at the end of the. 
at the end of the day, you know, minority always going to claim you more. Like, whatever the minority is, whether it's Puerto Rican, whether it's black, whether it, you know, whatever you mix with. Yeah, I mean, it'll it'll claim you reluctantly, but it will claim you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll claim you by default. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to claim you by default. It's not going to like it, necessarily. It's still going to shit on you, that's all right, but it'll, it'll, it'll claim you. Yeah. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> So, I don't think we have recess today, right? No, not today. We weren't. We weren't planning on it. We weren't planning on it. Okay. So, so homework for today. Um, it's a really. It's, this is a deep one. This is a deep conversation. I think next week is going to be a little deep too because we're talking about Kendrick Lamar. That might get heated because some of us in here get really mad when that topic comes up. So we're talking now, about. I, I understand it's not right for me to call them hoes hoes, but I want to call them hoes hoes. Oh anyway. my god, no, it's not. It, no. I don't mean hoes in terms of sexual activity. I don't mean hoes in terms of sexual activity. I mean the fact oh, that they're hoeing oh. out there, they're hoeing you know out their anger for no no good reason. The you know. But that's for next week. Like we'll talk about that next week. Lord <laughs> have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> um, kid- <laughs> Kendrick Lamar and and his song Humble and the Humble Backlash will be um, a topic of conversation next week. So for homework, if you haven't listened to Kendrick Lamar's album, Damn, get your ass out there and especially the song Humble. Um, And we're also going to be talking about a little bit more about colorism, but we're also going to be touching on um, the different hair types as well. Um, that were referenced in Humble mm-hmm. and what he talks about and why he why he got the backlash in the first place. Like, where did that backlash even come from? Social media. Yes. Oh, what, really? Okay. Yeah. But so that's <laughs> that, that's the homework uh, for next week, and that is the show. <laughs> And thanks for hanging out. And school is officially out. Catch y'all later. There's the bell. Yeah, I'm going to call them hoes hoes anyway. Let's call them hoes Oh, hoes. my God. Just for simpl- simplification purposes. <laughs> Anthony be trying to get a heel out here in the street. I, yeah, I don't, I don't, them hoes just mad to be mad. Because it's cool oh. to be mad. You see, they're not even talking about that. Yes, yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Can I call men bitches on some shows sometimes? (laughs) Sometimes they earn that. Sometimes (laughs) they earn that. They do earn that. Aaron, where'd you go? I'm still here, y'all. Aaron's like, Aaron's like, I'm distancing myself from this foolishness. (laughs) Yeah, I don't, I don't don't subscribe to that kind of behavior. So you can't call hoes hoes. Can't call these hoes hoes. I Arizona mean, well, I'm Arizona just saying the fam, the fam ain't eating cheddar biscuits. Aaron's <laughs> <laughs> like, I got Cardi B to watch. Fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's ratchet. Ratchet. Uh, and it's still being recorded. Little ratchet is not hurting nobody. Shout out to Cardi. Shout out to Cardi B and her ratchet rash, tay. She not just regular ratchet. She ratchet tay. <laughs> what the hell is that? Ratchet tay. Ratchet with a she bad and bougie. She bad and bougie. <laughs> she ratchet with a with a twist. With a with a J E E. That's a different class of ratchet. Right. Oh lordy. Seriously. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>